the, you see, as someone so aptly put it, you're born into the body of Jesus Christ. For God, the bride, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when Nicodemus came to Christ, he said, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. We are born into the family of God. Not born of our mother, no. but born by accepting Jesus. Born spiritually. That's right. First time we're born physically. And he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again spiritually by personal faith in what God's Word has to say. Uh, so, so plain in Romans 10, 9 through 10, and you've put it so well, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's right. Now, repentance is very difficult. It's very difficult for anybody in America because nobody wants to admit they're wrong. Uh, they don't want to admit they're wrong on political subjects. They don't want to admit they're wrong on ethnic subjects or anything else. Uh, so it's been instilled into us over the years as Americans that we are kind of the upper class, that we're right on everything. It's very difficult for an American to confess that they have sinned and to repent of that sin and turn from it and turn to the Lord. Amen. It's not easy. It's now, it was many years ago in the days of the old brush arbors, back when the flaming evangelists were running across America. But today, uh, repentance is difficult. But without repentance, uh, no nation, this nation will not see a, a turnaround. We didn't see any repentance at 9 11. Uh, we didn't see any repentance at the Twin Towers. Um, we haven't seen any repentance as a result of uh, Iraq and all the lives that have been lost. Uh, America has not made a turnaround. Well, let me just tell you what it would take for America to turn around. And our pattern is, once again, Jonah and Nineveh. Now, Jonah went to the city of Nineveh, which was a large city. Uh, the Bible says it took three days to walk across it. That's a pretty large city. And he began to go to the street corners and cry out loud that God was going to judge the city in 40 days. Somehow, the king of Nineveh found out about it. And when he found out about it, the king accepted the, the warning of the prophet. And the king called a three-day fast of not just people, of all animals. Now, can you imagine today if a prophet were to simply go to the street corners and say that America is falling, God has judged it. Would the people of America hear the message? Well, I'm in a position to say that they haven't so far because for the last 16 years, I've been on nationwide radio all across the land trying to tell them what I've just told people, that this judgment is coming. They have not accepted it. They don't want to hear it. They don't support it. They haven't prayed for it. As a matter of fact, as far as I know, I'm the only one in America that still continues to tell the message of Demetri Dudeman, the warning, he's the Jonah sent to America. And the, not only have the Americans not accepted it, accepted it, but you'd have thought that I would have been invited in by the President of the United States to be able to hear, or Dimitri, better yet, when he was alive, to hear that warning. But none of that happened. What, if America was going to hear it, the President would have invited Dimitri into his Oval, oval Office and have repented accepted Jesus, I mean in a real heartfelt, tearful acceptance of the Lord Jesus, and called a nationwide repentance. Now I tell you what, with the, the fallen state America is in right now, if the president were to call me, for example, into his office, I would be very surprised if he were to receive Jesus. Uh, I just don't see it happening. But even if he did, what if he decided to call a nationwide repentance? Well, I can just see him now getting on uh, nationwide TV, telling people he's accepted Jesus, telling people in America that they need to stop sending repent, and that he has announced a nationwide fast. If he were to do that, oh, Lord, we don't even want to say what kind of bad things would probably happen to him, short of the Lord supernaturally protecting him. I think that, you, well, you just got to ask yourself, 
Would America do that? Would the president receive a warning message like that? Would the president call a nationwide fast of all people and animals? Not on your life. If America repented, there is hope. Correct. Divine intervention is the only answer. Nothing else will stop the elite from doing what Thank they're you. doing. Thank you. That's exactly correct. As a matter of fact, what further of that warning said, that, that America cannot see the problems coming. God has closed America's eyes. He will not allow them to see the trouble coming until they first see Jesus. Once we turn and repent and receive Jesus, then the Bible says, the prophets say, that he would begin to open the eyes so that America could see the trouble coming. However, what the prophet has been told, I'm not speaking myself, I'm not a prophet, but prophet Dimitri Dudeman has been told that if America would repent and begin to stop sinning and repent, turn to Jesus, then he would allow her to see the problems coming. But the judgment has already been set, and it is not going to be changed. America will fall. There is hope. That hope is only in what the Founding Fathers established this nation on a godly basis. I would urge you, you notice that these DVDs are not copywritten. I beg of you, copy them. Give them out to every person you can. Get out the message. There is still time. We may not have much time. The elite have made it very plain what their plans are. And I have tried to tell you in every manner that I can what they're going to do. Please, give out these DVDs, DVDs and CDs everywhere you can and spread the message in hoping that we will see a turnaround. Lindsay, thank you for being on the program and uh, love to have you back again. Lindsay Williams. Thank you, Alex, for allowing me the privilege of being on your show today because yesterday, Wednesday, the 24th of this month of February, I was on the phone with the elitist who over the years has given me so much information. And in the course of our conversation, I was so startled by what he told me that the elitist have in store for every American this year, 2010. I immediately called up Jerry, your producer, and I said, Please, Alex's audience needs to know this. It's so important. And Alex, so this is the first time. The very next day, you'd let me be on your show. So this is the first time this info is being revealed. Yes, this is this is the first show that I have given his conversation on yesterday, just yesterday with. I've been on nobody else's show since then, and this just well, we appreciate me something so startling. I said I've got to tell people as fast as I can. Okay, let's break it down, and then we'll go back through each point in detail. Okay, first of all, let me tell you, uh, the, I'll give them to you, and, yeah, as you said, and break them down. First of all, he said, how much the dollar is going to change in value in the next 12 months, 2010? He said that 30 to 50 percent, and he, he elaborated it, went on. Second thing he talked about is Dubai City compared to Dubai World. Oh, he said, Chaplin, make a distinction between the two because he said Dubai World's default on $80 billion dollars he said it has literally, because they are the number one promoter of derivatives in the world today, it has caused the entire world banking system to be on the verge of collapse. Then he went on to talk about gasoline prices, crude oil compared to where prices are going to go in relation to the dollar. I was amazed. He almost laughed at me on the phone when I asked one particular question. He talked about the elections in November. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he was very emphatic about it. And, uh, Alex, I am, I'm still standing here dumbfounded over what he said about Israel invading Hamas, and he knew it before it ever happened. I mean, these elitists plan everything. Then he went into Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Yemen and had some very definite words about this. He, and he knew it all the time. He said Israel sent them Mossad 
uh, into other countries outside of Israel. Uh, they had uh, they had forged passports. Uh, everything was secretive, and they went after some leaders uh, of Hamas and ass- assassinated them. And you know, when this man was telling me this, I was sitting here almost with my mouth open, saying, "Wait a minute, you?" I didn't ask him this. I said, "You knew about this before it happened." He did. He knew every bit of this was going to happen. Well, he said, first of all, there's going to be some major upsets in the elections. Of course, that's nothing new. Uh, you all knew that. So you're going to see some other OPEC oil producing countries. Now, that includes more than just the Middle East. That includes Nigeria. That includes Mexico. That includes, oh, I mean, this brings up a whole different world. And all these countries that are all producing that are a part of the OPEC arm, he said, you're going to see one after the other have financial problems, do the same thing that Dubai World did. Uh, hi, how are you? I I don't want to be controversial, but I have a problem with something that you said at the beginning of the show. Alex had asked you about, uh, had you talked about with anybody else about the situation? And it's just not true that you didn't, because I heard you on Dr. Stan over a month ago. The information that I received on yesterday, I am backing up some of it with the things that he said a month ago because in order to stay, understand the things he said yesterday, I have to know what he said. Yeah, Jim, we went then. back to two years ago and, and to a year ago, too, and I'm sorry if that got confusing. But, no, I know Lindsey called me a month ago and I uh, meant to get him on and just fell through the cracks. Uh, but, no, he called us yesterday and talked to him again. You know, maybe I'm misunderstanding this, but basically what he's saying today is what he said uh, on Monteith a month ago. Anybody go to Radio Liberty and listen to it and see the date? It's not, it's not a okay, problem. Look, look so at Israel, he did, Hamas, Mossad, all of I'll these things brand new that he had never Can mentioned to me before. My question regards gold and silver seizures possible in the coming years because uh, it's possible that we're going to have new fiat currencies replace the dollar and maybe other currencies. I think Bob Chapman and Jim We know Rogers. what happened in 33. Anything is possible with these crooks. Lindsay? He has talked about gold at length. And one of the things he said was it's the currency of the elite. And he said, therefore, it's not going to be bothered. Now, you can take that at face value, I think, in the fact that there's not going to be any confiscation of gold and silver because they aren't going to touch the one thing that they trust. And he made it very plain. He said, I'm going to quote his exact words. And, and Alex and our uh, caller in, please understand that the only way that I can understand the elite is sometimes to go back to things that these people have said in the past. So you out in the listening audience, uh, don't get upset just merely because I relate to something that this person said in the past. You've got to put all this together as one big jigsaw puzzle. Sure, and picture, sure. Picture. Absolutely. And he he said, don't trust any financial instrument that is written on paper. Yeah, this gentleman has let me know in, in no uncertain terms all of the details that surround all of this. But for him to actually answer a question about the police state, he's never been willing to. But he's given me everything all the way around it. In fact, when he talked about the health care bill, he was talking about the uh, – the chip that they can put into a hypodermic needle by way of the vaccination they're going to, going to give you. And he said, every bit of this is in the health care bill. Yes, how you doing? I wanted Good. to know if there was any uh, Achilles heel that uh, he indicated that these people have that might be a way that we could organize and, and take them down before they take us down. You sure can, and I am so glad you asked that. Oh, my goodness, thank you so much. When I lived with the elite, I found there's only one thing that scares them to death. That's the masses of people waking up and learning the truth. They are scared to death of you waking up. As a result, I mentioned, I think when I was on Alex Jones' show last, that they have extended their timeline because you gave them $2.5 trillion back in the last two months of the Bush administration, and they do not want you to wake up. They're scared to death. In fact, that's the reason that they all – I asked him this. Oh, thank you for bringing this up. I asked him, I said, why are you going to diminish the dollar by 50% this year? He doesn't want you to wake up. He wants you to keep on like frog boiling in the pot, and instead of the, the, completely collapsing the dollar overnight, they are not going to do that, by the way. This is a prediction. They are not going to collapse Well, that's what the, the G20 overnight. has said. 30, 50% in, in 2012. The G20 has said publicly coordinated devaluation.